Hi, Mohum. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm good. It's great to meet you. How's everything coming along? I'm not too bad. How are you doing in general, though? First, I want to know that. Oh, I'm, I'm doing great. Thanks. Always great. Always happy to meet with students. Always happy to talk LSAT and admissions. This is the world I live in, you know? Fair, fair. <laughs> so what's going on for you? How could I help? Um, well, firstly, um, I think I'm not doing too, too bad with um, logical reasoning. Um, I'm only saying that I, this is my second time taking the LSAT. Um, I took it the first time around. Probably wasn't um, the best. I only studied for a, mo a month and I, I got a 150 and it wasn't the worst. I know that. Um, but, um, but yeah, so I'm finding it hardest to do well in logic games. I don't know what it is. Um, I feel like every single time I reach a sufficient condition question, something with if, um, like if cannot be third, which of the following must be true, things like that. Um, I just, I, I always get them wrong. My question would be, are you taking the information from the question stem as far as it can go, or you may be taking in directions that are invalid for some reason. I like, I don't see, I wouldn't know. Um, I think that's just me being like ill-prepared or not knowing to, to the fullest degree what I'm doing wrong. Cause see, that's like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't even know when I approach it. Like, I feel like I'm watching your videos and I feel like that's what I'm doing when I reach it. Cause I know you have a video on, I think sufficient conditions. Yeah. Um, so I've watched that. I have my notes with me, um, but I, I don't know. I just feel like it doesn't make sense to me. Um, is there anything you would recommend, like any like different kind of way of diagramming that? Well, to me, this isn't really a sufficient condition issue. This okay. is an issue about a certain kind of logic games question. Within the set of logic games questions, you have some that are orientation, some that are local if questions, and then mm -hmm. some that are global. Like which one of the following must be true in yeah. general? is a global question. If you have, if X is third, then mm -hmm. what could be true? Then your first step would typically be to draw a new diagram where X is on third. You take it as far as it can go, meaning you fill out the diagram based on how X being third impacts the placement of other variables on the diagram. Then typically they're asking you a question about the rest of that diagram that you filled in. Okay. And I like I should never, in that sense, um, use work from previous questions. Like in the sense of like I don't keep my general diagram, but not the rules or anything, right? Like it's kind of like a clean slate for the next question. Or should I keep any of the rules in mind? Well, you should keep all of the rules in mind. I mean, like but, from the questions. So, if there was a previous if question, mm -hmm. that particular constraint does not have to hold true going forward. Like okay. if. So from with my example, let's say if X is third, what mm -hmm. could be true? Let's say that were question number four in the game. Okay. If question number three in the game said, if J is second, what must or could be true? Mm -hmm. for, question, for the question number four, you don't have to use J on second. J could be on okay. second maybe, but doesn't have to. Okay. Um, but if that... you had a previous, go ahead, please. No, 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 that makes sense. I'm here to listen, so... <laughs> No, I, I, I want to learn more too. I mean, my, my question for you is basically, what I was going to say is that if you have a previous scenario where X was already on three, then that scenario could help you solve this question without having to draw anything new potentially. Right, right. Okay. Um, and I had a question. How many diagrams do you feel like you typically draw when um, you read your initial conditions um, in the question? For a main, uh, for a main setup? Yeah. It varies. It all varies depending on the nature of the game. There are some games where I might do two or three main diagrams reflecting different major possibilities. Mm -hmm. There are many, many games where I would do only one. Okay. Okay. Because I found, my, found myself that I do only have one sometimes and I'm like, I feel like I'm um, limiting my own possibilities by only having the one, but I feel like sometimes I can't make another um, diagram. So like it is viable sometimes to have one, like it's possible. Oh, totally. Yeah, all the okay. time. Okay. Because I was just, I didn't want to be limiting myself because I wasn't thinking further enough, like further enough um, to like make those further conclusions or assumptions. But okay, um, that makes sense. Um, one other thing um, for um, logical reasoning, um, 
So the way that I approach it, so I'm an English student. Um, I go to a university in Ontario. Um, so, um, so I initially took that approach of learning it as like a syllogism. Um, so the whole like minor, like minor premise, um, like major premise, and then you have your conclusion. Um, so I'm taking that approach and I feel like sometimes I'm, it's taking me longer because I'm trying to find those things first. And then I realize that some questions are just like the main idea or things like that. So do you think that that's worth it? Because I know some questions do ask for like, um, like what is like supporting evidence, like a warrant and things like that, like a qualifier in that sense um, in the question. So I'm like taking that like literature approach, but I don't know if it's serving me or like it's taking away time. Good question. I mean, which question type are you talking about right now? Like just in general, like when they ask for like, just um, when you have, um, if they ask like, is a conclusion met, is a conclusion not met in those kinds of questions. So are we talking like logical reasoning? Yeah. I'm just trying to bucket it a little bit. Okay. So logical reasoning, there may be a question type asking you, what's the main point? Mm -hmm. That's going to be your conclusion. It may be unstated directly, maybe a paraphrase of the conclusion. Mm Mm-hmm. I'll be honest, I don't really know what a syllogism is. I know it's a logic word, but my point is that you don't need to necessarily take a very formal logic structural approach. I do think that a literature approach Mm -hmm. could be useful, meaning if you know what a qualifier is, if you know what a subsidiary uh, clause is, Mm -hmm. that could be useful to help you drill down to the main point. So for Mm -hmm. example, information bounded between two commas typically is not core to the statement, right? Like you could chop that out, still flows smoothly. You're left with your, typically your main subject, main verb. Yeah. So that certainly could be useful. Okay. But on the LSAT, I can't say there's always going to be like uh, subsidiary evidence and primary evidence. I don't think that typically comes into play. Yeah. Um, Would you recommend um, even making notes as you read? Because I don't typically do that, but then I find myself having to like go back and find um, where that specific set of information is for the question. Like, do you think it's worth annotating on the side? Like, I think this is a key theme. I think this is like a main point. For logical reasoning, I'm hesitant to really ever recommend much diagramming. There are very few cases where diagramming could be useful. I think the more formal logic type questions, which are certainly not a focus of the section, you could jot down a couple of things related to those in terms of diagramming similar to how you would in logic games, especially mm-hmm. with conditionals. But most logical reasoning questions don't really lend themselves to that kind of diagramming. And on both the digital LSAT and the LSAT flex, you can't yeah. even diagram next to anything. It's got to be on your scratch paper. Yeah. So that might just take time away, if anything. Yeah. I mean, I think it's okay to do it a little bit, especially more so on reading comprehension. Mm-hmm. Definitely games you want to diagram, but for logical reasoning, it's a very limited usefulness. Only okay. a couple of cases. Um, I was wondering, is it possible for me to ask you about um, recommendation letters? Yeah, shoot. Okay, um, so I was asking um, a former, um, like I worked at a law firm just for a couple of months during COVID. Um, so I asked my employer, he and he was asking me to write the initial draft for it. Um, I don't want to sound too forward or sound too like I'm praising myself. That's like the furthest thing I want to do. Would you recommend any kind of like um, like key things I should I should include or anything like to like veer away from in order to not make myself like seem like I'm like boasting or anything. Yeah. Well, first off, that's a great position to be in. So that definitely suggests a lot of trust between you and the recommender and the recommender wants you to have a very strong letter. So I think that's great. As for just how far you go, I think it's really based on the nature of your relationship with them. Yeah. So there's, that's a judgment call I can't really speak to. What I would recommend you look to include instead is not really about the degree of enthusiasm. That's Mm -hmm. something for you to navigate. But instead, I would talk more about really giving specifics. This is a chance for you to really craft it in a way that gives some objective measures. So if there's a certain, if there's anything before, after you can include, I think that's really nice to be able to have to show transformation. Or one thing that's really nice to have in general is relative comparisons. 
So what you might have done in class relative to others in the class or how you might stack up against other students in general the professor has worked with. Okay. No, that's very helpful. So like not so much as myself, but myself in comparison to others. In some ways, or also in comparison to your previous self. So okay. like, for example, if you took on challenges and then grew over the course of your time with this person, that would certainly help. Okay. And I feel like that's like the general theme I should include in a personal statement, right? Not a diversity statement. Personal statement's more so something you've overcome. And a diversity statement is something is still like, if need be, like something that still might be limiting your abilities or something that still might be occurring in your life? I wouldn't really think about them that way. I think that in general, the arc of either one doesn't really have to differ that much. And there are plenty of diversity statements that could also serve as personal statements. So I can't say that either one has to relate to obstacles in general and -hmm. doesn't have to relate to whether the obstacles still exist or whether you've surpassed them. Okay. So that's not the way I would really look at it. I would just look at it as diversity statement is really focused on how your background or your experiences can bring a unique perspective. And then personal statement can really be literally anything at all in terms of that structure. I think the biggest recommendation is to not make anything a sob story and to try and have some sort of element where you end on an upbeat note. Yeah, like growth at, to some degree. Growth could be a fantastic theme. Yeah. Um, just one quick question. Um, so I, I'm not really coming from a country where there's much of a culture shock where I need to talk about what I'm going to bring, like my experience, like in that, like in that sense of like coming from different European country or something like that. Do you think it's worth mentioning? Like, I know I'm going to briefly mention, I'm sure they'll see in my transcript that it's not from, I'm not coming from a U.S. Um, um, like college or high school um because i initially like i want to apply to the u.s i want to go to a u.s law school so do you think it's worth in- incorporating at all or mentioning that i'm going to be coming from like canada yeah i think you could be i mean if you're well it depends what what would you want the theme are you talking about diversity statement or even a personal statement just I mean, like actually no a diversity statement yeah okay well i mean i think that do you want to talk about the Canadian perspective? Is that what you would make the theme? That's what I'm saying. Like, is it worth? Because that's something I'm, I'm not, it's not very different in that sense. It's not um, like, there's not going to be much of a culture shock or anything like that. So it's not like, it is like slightly like a different perspective. And obviously the schooling, the education system is different, but I don't know if it's worth like going into. Is it important to you? Is it something that you would want to highlight? I mean, that would be something after the, I don't think so. Um, I don't think it's too, too important to what makes me me and why I would be good in that law school. Um, so maybe not, but okay. So that helps then. So that answers my question. <laughs> Is there a different, but there could be a different perspective you could bring based on some other element of your background. So if there's a, yeah, a hobby or interest or family, I mean, people write all sorts of diversity statements. It's not strictly limited to national origin. Yeah. Okay. So I'm probably just going to go over, read some um, options, read and go over some others, uh, diversity statements and personal statements and see what I can work with. Yeah, totally. And feel free to send over any drafts that you like. I'm happy to include them in an upcoming application essay workshop in the course. Oh, perfect. Um, yeah, I definitely will do. I see. I didn't even know that that was available, but. Yeah, sure. Know. We've been doing them fairly regularly. We haven't done any this month yet, but okay. I'll probably do one before the end of the year. All right. See, like that's more than enough time. Definitely. Alrighty. So thank you so much. And thank you for taking your time to talk to me. My pleasure. Of course. Keep in touch. See you in class.